Hello everyone, welcome to this video. In today's session, we have a question coming from additional mathematics. The topic, corner geometry. So here's the question that we have today. So let's dive in and see what you're supposed to do. So the question reads, in the diagram below, ABCD is a trapezium. AB, so this is AB, is parallel to DC, an angle, so that stands for angle, so angle DAB, angle at A, is equal to 90 degrees. The coordinates of A and D are negative 4,4 and 2,8 respectively. So negative 4,4, the coordinates for A, and the coordinates for D, 2,8. The equation of BC is 4y equals 7x. So you can see that this is the line BC, and the equation is 4y equals 7x minus 8. Then here are the questions. The first question, find the equation of AB. So we want to find the equation of AB. The equation of DC, we should also figure out the equation of line DC. The last part, the coordinates of C. So before we could answer this question, let's just have some basic information about equation of lines. So if you have any straight line, to find the equation of a straight line, we use the equation of any straight line is given by y equals mx plus c. So m is the steepness of the line, the gradient of the line. And the c is the y-intercept. So you only need to know that you should have a point, the gradient, then you're going to figure out the value of c. So to find the equation of a straight line, we use this formula, y equals mx plus c. Apart from that, we have two situations that we are going to encounter in this particular problem. We have a situation where two lines are parallel and two lines are perpendicular. So when two lines are parallel, so if I have two lines which are parallel like that, we have line one and line two. What you need to know is, if this has gradient one and this has another gradient two, if two lines are parallel, then their gradients are equal, meaning gradient one should be equal to gradient two. So you should put this to memory. Parallel lines have equal gradient. Situation number two is when two lines are perpendicular. If I have a line that goes like that, then I have another line that goes like that, such that these two lines are perpendicular. In other words, they meet and make a 90 degree angle with each other. So we have gradient one, here with this for this line and another gradient two for this line when two lines are perpendicular then the product of their gradients should be equal to negative one so meaning gradient one multiplied by gradient two we should get negative one so these are the two uh, situations that we should put to memory so we should have this and this so this for perpendicular lines and that for parallel lines in this particular problem, we are given a trapezium. What you should know is that if I have a trapezium like this, a trapezium has two parallel sides. And these two parallel sides, the length should not, are not necessarily the same, but they are parallel to each other. So what you should understand is that if this has a certain gradient and this has a certain gradient, the fact that they are parallel, their gradients should be the same. Apart from that, if I have a line here and another line here such that they form a 90 degree angle, then these two lines, this, this line and this line should follow this. The gradient of the first line times the gradient of the second line should give you negative 1. So with, these, uh, with this basic information, let's apply it and see how we can solve that question. So we have this. So the first question says, find the equation of this AB. So we know that to find the equation of uh, a line, we use y equals mx plus c, b, or mx plus c. So I'm now solving. So, but a, I want to find the equation of a, b. So what do I know about line a, b? I know that it has a point negative 4, comma 4. So I know that there is a point a, which is negative 4, comma 4. I also know that for me to find the equation of this line, we use this y equals mx plus c. So we know a point, it's okay. We also need to know 
the gradient of this line. So what we, we can observe here is that line AB is perpendicular to line AD. So the fact that line AD and AB are perpendicular, we can first of all use this line because we already know these two points and find the gradient of line AD. When we use the gradient, we can, when we find the gradient for line AD, we can now use the idea for perpendicular lines. So the first step here is to find the gradient of line AD. So A is negative 4,4 and D is 2,8. So first of all, let's find the gradient of line AD. How do we find the gradient? It's very easy. The gradient represented by the symbol M is equal to the change in Y over the change in X. In other words, Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. We're going to assign these numbers as Y1, X1, Y2, X2, just like that. So each point has X and Y. So this is the X value and that is the Y value. This is the x value and that is the y value. If I call this x1, this should be y1 and automatically this should be x2, y2. I just substitute now there. So gradient equals our y2, 8 minus x2, uh, y1, 4 over x2, we have 2 minus negative 4. So we have 8 minus 4, that's 4. You can see that this is negative times negative, it will be positive. So it will be 2 plus 4, which is 6. So we can clearly see that the gradient for AD, remember this is the gradient for AD. This gradient is for AD. So the gradient for AD, we can simplify to there 1, to there 3. So we're getting 2 over 3. So knowing the gradient for AD and knowing that AD is perpendicular to AB, we can now apply the rule for perpendicular lines. We know that gradient 1 multiplied by gradient 2, we should get negative 1. So we already know that gradient 1 is 2 over 3 multiplied by gradient 2, we should get negative 1. This is the same as over 1, we can cross multiply. 1 multiplied by m2 times 2, this will just give us 2m2 equal to 3 multiplied by negative 1, we're going to have negative 3. When we divide throughout by 2, we're going to get gradient 2 as negative 3 over 2. So meaning this is now the gradient for A, B. So this is the gradient for A, B. So we can now find the equation for line A, B because we know the gradient and we also know a point. So let's now use this equation, this formula and find the equation. So, we know that y equals mx plus c. Where there's, we need to fi find the value of c here. So, where there's y, we put 4 equal to gradient negative 3 over 2. What is the value of x? We know that x there is negative 4 plus c, like that. So, you can see that 2 there, 1, 2 there uh, will be negative 2. So negative 3 multiplied by negative 2, that's positive 6. So we're going to have 4 equals positive 6 there and plus C. To find the value of C, 6 should cross the equal sign there. We're going to have 4 minus 6 equals C. And therefore C is equal to negative 2. So if we know the value of C, we can now write down the equation. So therefore... Therefore, the equation of A, B will be equal to Y equals, remember we're following this form, the gradient, the gradient is negative 3 over 2. So we have negative 3 over 2 X, then what is the value of C? Negative 2, like that. So this is the equation for A, B. The next question, find the equation of D, C. So we now want to find the equation of DC. So this is DC. So you can see that DC is parallel to AB. And if two lines are parallel, 
then they share the same gradient. So, but B, we want to find the equation for DC. We already know that D is a point 2,8 like that. And we know that these two lines are parallel. Automatically, M1 is equal to M2 because the two lines are parallel. So the gradient for AB is the same as the gradient for DC. With this uh, method, we, we were able to find the gradient for AB. Therefore, even gradient for DC will also be negative 3 over 2. So knowing the gradient and the point, we can now use this and find the equation. So we're going to say y is mx plus c. We need to find the value of c for line dc. So we know that y is 8, the gradient negative 3 over 2. Where there's x, we know that x there is 2 plus c like that. So we can cancel this and cancel that. We're going to have 8 equals negative 3 plus c. So when we solve for c, a, a negative 3 will cross the equal sign, it will be plus 3. So c is equal to 11 because 8 plus 3 is 11. So knowing the value of c, we can now conclude and say, therefore, the equation for dc is y equals, remember the form, mx plus c. So the gradient is still negative 3 over 2 multiplied by x, then plus, what's the value of c? 11. So we add it there. So we know this. So that's basically how you would have uh, found the equation for dc. Let's look at the last part. The last part says the coordinates of c. In other words, we want to know the value of x and the value of y for c. So the coordinates for c. For us to find the coordinates of a point, we just need to look at the two lines that are making that point. So if you have a line like that and a line like that, then there's this point. For us to know the coordinates of this point, we need to solve this and that we need to get this equation and that equation then we solve them simultaneously we're going to get an x value and a y value then we're going to have the coordinates for that point so you can see that the lines that are making up point c are dc and bc so all we need to do is solve the line dc and bc simultaneously so if we solve these two equations simultaneously we're going to get the x value and the y value to, to represent the coordinates for c so let's just do that. So I'll use this part. So we can see that we have DC. So we need to know the equation for DC, which we are we, we figured out. So remember DC. So why let me use a different color? So why? equals negative 3 over 2 x plus 11 then the, the other line making point c is bc so we need to solve this and that simultaneously so bc is 7 y equal to 7 uh, 4 y equals 7 x minus 8 so we solve this simultaneously we have many methods that we can use for solving simultaneous equations but in this case, you can see that y is already the subject of the formula. Meaning, where there is y in this equation, I will substitute it with this item. So we're going to have 4. Where there is y here, we can put negative 3x over 2 plus 11. Like that. And equals 7x minus 8. So we can now multiply 4 throughout. So 4 will multiply everything there. So 4 multiplies this, so it's like your 4 multiplied by negative 3x over 2. You can see that we're going to have a 2 there, and this 2 will multiply that. So we're going to have negative 6x. So when this 4 multiplies there, we're going to have negative 6x. Then 4 multiplied by 11, that's 44, and equals 7x minus 8. All we need to do Let's group the like terms. So I can get uh, 8 to this side, then negative 6x to the other side. So what we're going to have is... So what we're going to have is... Uh, 
are 44 when 8 comes here to be positive like that equals then we're going to have 7x plus 6x because negative 6x here will cross the equal sign and become positive so for, uh, for 44 plus 8 that's 52 so what we have here is 52 equals 7x plus 6x that's 13x like that so over 13 over 13 to get the value of x so when you cross the equal sign you can see that x equals so 13 goes into 52 four times so the value of x there is 4 so now that we know the value of x we can figure out what the value of y will be we can just use this part and find the value of y so we know that y is equal to negative 3 x over 2 plus 11 so where there is x i can actually substitute with 4 so y is equal to negative 3 over 2 where there is x i can put 4 there then plus 11 so you can see that 2 there 1 2 there 2 then negative 3 multiplied by 2 is negative 6 so y is negative 6 plus 11 so y is equal to negative 6 plus 11 this will give us 5 meaning we now know that at this point c the value of x there is 4 and the value of y there is 5 so what can we conclude we can now say therefore and say therefore c is the point 4 comma 5 and that's how you would find the coordinates for c and that's it for this video see you in the next video